today we're taking a look at the Puerto Rico, the main headlining ship from update 11.7. It's back in the dockyard, and I'm going to talk about if it's worth getting or how much time it's going to take you to actually get it later on in this video. But I've been playing it, and I wanted to share some of my initial thoughts. That probably should impact your decision on if it's worth getting or not. The alpha damage is nice. 12 305 millimeter guns. These are Alaska guns, so we do have improved pen angles. Unfortunately, we don't have Alaska levels of dispersion. So our weakness here is we're on the battleship dispersion table rather than the battle cruiser dispersion table, which is a big difference. Although Puerto Rico does have improved Sigma to somewhat make up for that. This ship mainly feels accurate through its volume of fire in comparison to the Alaska. And even though our ship doesn't have the best range and it really doesn't have the best reload, I found the damage output to be surprisingly good out of the Puerto Rico. Since I've been playing a lot of the Sevastopol to make that video review earlier this week, and the Puerto Rico's felt like a much better battle cruiser. I'm going to compare it a lot to Battle Impact. I really do think that the Sevastopol's issue really comes down to Battle Impact. It feels useless a lot of the time. It's fun, those pushes and interesting gameplay opportunities that that heal unlocks for you is very interesting, but sometimes you just need to kill DDs. Sometimes you just need to have a radar to deal with the enemy team that's hiding behind islands or hiding in smokes. And Puerto Rico really is able to um, apply that pressure to the enemy team. The guns are awesome, and if you're able to catch broadsides like this, man, it is a really, really good time. Even though our dispersion wouldn't really seem like it would be, the decent reload and the overall pretty solid dispersion really helps out here. I think that the battle impact on the Puerto Rico is definitely a big selling point of this ship. You're big, you're clumsy, you're a bit like a battleship in a lot of ways, including the firepower, but the battle impact feels a lot more like cruisers. Des Moines has a 10 kilometer radar with a long duration and makes use of that through its really fast reload. Puerto Rico doesn't have the reload, but it retains that radar. And if assuming you have some teammates that are willing to focus fire, which this game we certainly did, as we can see the amount of fire going in on that poor Alabama, it feels pretty good to play a Puerto Rico. Pushing up to islands, trying to use your radar to impact games isn't too difficult. Of course, this map is very much designed for a ship like Puerto Rico, where we're able to push up to these capture zones almost without taking any damage or really getting spotted at all and having a really ton of value coming from this radar. It does struggle though to solo destroyers, right? It does rely much, a lot more on teammates. So this Holland here reversing in the cap, we're gonna try and pour in some fire. I'm not the one spotting him, but we may as well shoot at DDs. And yeah, that dispersion comes into play there a little bit. Fortunately against bigger targets, right? We're gonna hit more shells. And if we're using AP, they have improved pen angles, much like the Alaska. So that's where some of the consistency comes from is that the AP is just really good against larger targets since you have that improved pen angles and the actual alpha damage is really, really solid. But I do want to be shooting at destroyers because that's how you win games. And I think that combined with decent dispersion and decent amount of damage coming in on destroyers with this radar, it's really quite enjoyable to play. I had some miserable experiences in Sevastopol trying to get some of those games, and it really came down to just low battle impact. I felt useless. Whereas in Puerto Rico, I felt like for the most part, I've been able to impact most of the games that I've been in. There's a few exceptions, but uh, for the most part, it's felt pretty good to play. Not that the Sevastopol is bad. I think it's very fun and interesting, but Puerto Rico is just a better ship for, well, this. Enemy destroyers are pushing into your spawn. What, do you, what can you do? Well, you can go chase them down with a radar and hopefully herd them into your teammates. That kind of thing is what the Puerto Rico is capable of doing. Notice we're flat broadside to a Vermont across the map, so we're gonna try and, well, watch for him to get spotted. He gets spotted now, so I try to start turning out, and hopefully we're gonna dodge some of these salvos. Something to note about the Puerto Rico and its armor is that it's pretty good overall. 30 millimeter upper belt, unlike the Alaska, which has 28, so you're able to bounce 406 millimeter guns. 
Um, but crucially, the Citadel is almost impossible to hit. I think all of us have experienced the broadside Puerto Rico since... I mean, the stereotype previously is that just whales got it last time because it was so difficult to get. Who may or may not be the best players, okay? I'm not trying to stereotype, but... There's broadside Puerto Ricos that have been seen in the wild for several years, and they didn't tend to take citadels. So combined with his large HP pool, radar, and overall pretty solid guns, this ship can play quite aggressive, and we're going to play a little bit aggressive here as we push across the middle of the map. Our team pushed into the enemy spawn, possibly the worst tactical move you can possibly make in this game, but we're going to try and make it work by pushing aggressively through middle and trying to open up some of these crossfires. With Puerto Rico's reasonable concealment, I'm able to do this reasonably well. We get a good hit into the Vermont here, forcing him to respect us a little bit, forcing him to angle, hopefully, and maybe give some broadside to our battleships that are pushing through uh, the spawn. Fortunately for us, we don't take a Citadel from the Vermont. Even though it, we, he is overmatching us, the large HP pool here is enough to make 10,000 damage salvos not really feel too bad. And even though this Vermont is reasonably well angled, I don't really mind because the improved pen angles on the Puerto Rico, if you've played the Des Moines, you've played the Alaska, you know, right? You can just aim for angled ships and you're gonna get some really, really good damage. Now, as far as alpha damage is concerned, yeah, it feels like a battleship sometimes, in a lot of ways. In ways where you find a broadside cruiser at, what, five kilometers, and you just absolutely destroy them. <laughs> Definitely the highlight of my time with Puerto Rico so far. Um, but of course, sometimes you don't do that because dispersion is dispersion. So it is a battleship through and through in that way. But at least you have the battle impact of a radar. So I think for battleship players who are kind of tired of the low battle impact and feeling useless in some of these matches, but you still want the alpha damage, I think Puerto Rico is an excellent ship. I've really enjoyed my time with it. But you notice there is a bit of an issue with the shell velocity. I missed. I just straight up missed that Puerto Rico on the enemy team, um, who was on like 2,000 HP. Didn't manage to kill him. But uh, yeah, it takes a bit to get used to the shell velocity. I think this ship is a lot of fun to play. I really did enjoy most of my games with it. And you're really never going to have a perfect experience in this game since it's an online multiplayer PvP game. There's very frustrating elements to it. And a ship like this with really good alpha, yeah, you're going to have some times where dispersion just isn't going to go your way. But at least this way, you can push up to islands, use the overall reasonable tankiness, and make use of this really, really nice radar to help your team in other ways than just that alpha damage, if it isn't working. Fortunately for us in this game, it was definitely working. It wasn't earlier on, but this middle push we made over to this cap really did help secure this win for our team. And as we're finishing up dealing with this Thunder, notice that the dispersion can be good and it can be kind of bad. Some of the salvos hit really hard and other times like I waited 20 seconds for that, really. Um, so don't think that this ship is overpowered or anything. If it had Alaska dispersion, I think it probably would be overpowered, just like Alaska is a little bit overpowered. Um, the inconsistency on the guns I think is important considering what the alpha damage is capable of. That uh, that poor Prince Eugen, uh got the RNG version of this ship where it just happened to go our way. 150,000 damage, it's really, really good damage output. As far as this game goes, almost managing to kill that Thunderer there, getting a third kill. And now we're gonna clean up the carrier yet. I think that if you get into Puerto Rico, you really do want to be having one of these special commanders. If you've noticed throughout this video, I've mostly shot the AP, but it's really nice to be able to swap to the HE when convenient or when there's DDs around. Um, and the special commanders allow that. Halsey, of course, gives us an amazing reload buff. We're just not quite able to take advantage of it that game. But really good result and honestly a lot of fun and much, much more battle impact than something like the Sevastopol. Now, before I talk about the build that I was actually using, we got to talk about the actual way you get the Puerto Rico. This dockyard is easier to get done than the previous one, but it's still pretty difficult. You got to buy through six building phases, of course, if you do want this ship. 
which, you know, was what, 7,000 doubloons? Uh, somewhere in there, if you buy one of these starter packs. And then you have to complete all 10 phases here, right? So I've done a little bit of quick math. This is not science, like this is not exact, okay? But usually base XP is gonna take the longest on most phases. And as far as the next longest, I mean, there's a debate, but I just went for the highest damage values that you'd have to grind up. Since if you're going through these phases, there's certain ways you gotta play the game, trying to get fires, spotting torpedoes, contesting caps. If you're optimally playing through that, damage won't necessarily be your priority, meaning it's probably gonna be the last one that you pick up. So that's kind of my thought here. I used base XP on the ones that had a general base XP value and then uh, damage output if, uh, if it didn't have a base XP uh, mission. The uh, 10th mission has several 35 or 36,000 uh, base XPs. Yeah, 36,000, several that you'd have to do. I assumed you'd do the other missions plus two of these 36,000 base XPs. So that's where that comes from. So total base XP required 277,000 base XP and five and a half million damage. So if I use my averages of base XP of around 1500, that's gonna give me 177 games required just for those base XP ones. And that's assuming that I'm optimally playing through some of the other missions. And if I do my damage, around 47 games through for that five and a half million, assuming I'm getting around my average of 116,000. Keep in mind with base XP, you can't use your normal XP amount that the game says you average. I average 2,342 XP in game, but that's impacted by premium time. So I'm removing one and a half, I guess, for premium, something like that. I guess if I have Warships premium, it's 1.65. Um, but let's say around 1500 base XP. This is ballpark math, right? So the total number of games it's gonna take me if I were to do this normally, around 225. So over the next two and a half, three months, if you have that kind of time, assuming 12 minute average game time, right? We're looking at 45 hours of playing, which over three months maybe isn't too bad, but it is a commitment. And keep in mind that if they're gonna get you with that early starter pack value buy, They've got you hooked, right? So you gotta think about this time commitment. I don't know the averages for the player base. So I was just guessing here. So maybe a thousand base XP on average, keep in mind, not including premium time. Uh, we already talked about removing that. So a thousand base XP on average, let's say, and maybe 70,000 average damage. Assuming you're doing this with higher tier ships, maybe it's even higher than that but it's gonna take you 277 games just for the base XP on 1,000 base XP per game and around 80 more. So 356 total games coming in at 71 hours. So you can see how depending on your performances on average, this is gonna take a while. As for the build that I was rolling with, I decided to put Halsey on and then I just ran with a pretty standard cruiser build. Top grade gunner is pretty valuable considering our concealment's not amazing at 13 kilometers, even with a full conceal build. So we're getting some nice value out of top grade gunner, giving us better reload. Superintendent to get more radars and heals, of course. Survivability expert just helping us tank and be a little bit difficult to take out and make better value out of our radars with more advanced positioning. Adrenaline rush is just an amazing skill, so not gonna say much more there. I went with priority target, but Perhaps with this ship, I'm trying to have Halsey as more of a universal commander. With this ship, I might try focus firing, just cause, man, getting focused by carriers was awful in this thing. Gun feeder is epic, and I really think grease the gears is required here, since big guns don't turn the fastest. And even with improved grease the gears, still nearly, uh, nearly 30 seconds. So keep that in mind. It's not the most maneuverable ship in the world. It's not a cruiser. It feels like a small battleship with cruiser battle impact through that radar. I have considered range mod. I'm not, I haven't done it yet, but I will be trying that out in the future since the games that felt the worst were the open water maps where I didn't have enough range. 18.8 kilometers with a 13 kilometer detect can be very tricky to use on those open water maps. Um, steering gears mod, I think is more valuable for the playstyle I'm going for, but I did find propulsion mod very, very useful on island play and trying to push into maps where there's a ton of islands where I just want to play pretty stationary. 
Um, definitely going aiming systems though. I've been running surveillance radar mod, uh, but that can be expensive, so just go damage control system mod one. The radar does last a long time regardless. I think it's a 35 second radar, so it only goes to 42 seconds, so not a big difference there, but a small thing that can add to the value of that radar. But I can't say if the Puerto Rico is worth getting. It's really up to you and the time you have over the next few months. The ship is fun. The ship is good. It's very interesting to play, especially coming from something like the Sevastopol that had basically no battle impact and had a really weird gimmicky heal that was a lot of fun to play with. But as far as a standard good ship goes, Puerto Rico is that. It is a good battle cruiser that can work in most places. It just might take a while to get, and if you don't have time over the next few months, I can't recommend you start with these starter packs, because they are pretty expensive. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.